Can you guys all hear me? Good? Awesome. How are you guys all doing today? <laughs> I hope you've been enjoying the conference. This has been probably one of the best experiences I've had lately. I absolutely, um, the people putting this on, all of you being here today, um, the conversations that we've had, the talks that, that have been going on here have just been really, really remarkable. And it's been such a great reminder about sort of how I got in the space, why I'm here. And um, hopefully it's a good reminder for you too about like why we're building this future and what, what the heck we're trying to do here. So um, I'm Taylor Monahan. I uh, originally was, um, I founded my Ether wallet. We had a little brand fork um, about a month ago. So now we're my crypto. Um, and I'm gonna talk to you guys today a little bit about why the decentralized future is people. And um, <laughs> so the blockchain is gonna be this thing, right, that, that revolutionizes all these established systems. But at the end of the day, it's the people. It's you, it's me, it's my mother, it's researchers, it's professors, it's every single person coming together to turn all of these idealistic visions into a reality. And so when I think about, hey, how are we going to get there? How are we going to get from point A to point B? Um, I think about, OK, first we need to figure out why we're doing this. We need to figure out what our purpose is. And because you guys are all sitting here in this room right now, I have a feeling that you kind of have an idea about what that purpose is and why you're here. Something about either Bitcoin or the blockchain or Ethereum um, has really struck a chord with you. Right? And, and, and it's captured your imagination. Uh, perhaps you've fallen down this rabbit hole. Um, and then, so step two is we want to share and collaborate. And so we want to share knowledge between each other. We want to attend events like this. Um, we want to just have conversations online, on all the forums, on, um, on Reddit, on Twitter, on everything. And we want to share that knowledge and, and help everyone's ideas get better and stronger and more robust. And then lastly, if we do all of these things successfully and we work together successfully, we're going to change the world. And I want to point out that changing the world doesn't have to be this huge thing, right? Like, we don't have to be like, okay, I'm going to change the world. You can be like, I'm going to change this little part of the world, this itty bitty little singular experience. I'm going to make this better. And collectively, all of these little tiny events that are improving the world, that are making it better, that are making it more decentralized, that's what's going to end up having a lasting impact on the larger world and the systems that we're, use, that we're using. So let's start with the first one, which is, why exactly are we building this? So everyone here today uh, and over the last couple of days has spoken about all these really, really awesome ideas. And while they're different and there's a ton of different approaches, there's some core underlying concepts that, um, that, that speak to like why we're building this exactly. And you know, some of them are that we believe that the power and the control should be in people's hands, right? That we value cooperation over these centralized competitors. Um, that we want to incentivize and, re and reward people who do the work. And that we believe that the current centralized systems stifle innovation, limit progress, and ultimately harm the average person. I also just want to take a moment to point out that, uh, especially with the markets right now, you guys may be thinking that we're here, and I just want to remind you that we're not. Okay? Like, we are really, really, really not. Uh, we're way the heck over here. Okay? It is so early. Everyone in this room is really, truly a pioneer. Okay? We are like little tiny babies trying to figure out what the heck we're doing. Um, we have a long way to go. So the market's going to go up and down. Okay? But the technology, when we talk about the technology, where we are, what we're building, um, don't, don't get that confused with the markets. The technology and the price, they're not related whatsoever. Okay, so I, I would personally recommend you just ignore the price. Uh, it makes your life like way less stressful. Just focus on the tech, okay? Um, I also, you know, kind of like this, 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 going back to the why question, right? Why, um, I think that connecting people in the world is really unfinished at this point, okay? And it's getting increasingly inefficient. 
So if you look back at the early days of the internet, we had um, basically AOL, and it was like this big centralized superpower. And then the Apples and the Googles and the Facebooks and the Amazons, they came in and they started building more open protocols and they started really revolutionizing the internet. But today, those big, big, big centralized companies are now what we need to disrupt, okay? Those are the big centralized things that are now inefficient. And we need to take those centralized forces and decentralize it so that it can be, that, that the world, that the user experience, that our data, that our privacy, whatever it is, all of it, okay, can be better. So the next step is obviously to share and collaborate. And while I encourage you to have conversations with each other and online and all of that stuff, um, unfortunately, you're listening to me talk right now, so I'm going to share my experience with you, and I hope that this shared knowledge um, can, can help you on your own personal journeys. So when I first, way back in the day, like two and a half years ago, started my Ether wallet, we were solving um, this really simple problem. When the Ethereum blockchain launched, there was no way to interact with the blockchain um, except via command line, and it was really a mess. So we ended up creating this really, really simple interface, and literally all it did was uh, it had like two buttons, and you could uh, generate a new wallet, and then you could send your Ether. And it didn't have any options. Uh, it wasn't fancy. Uh, it wasn't pretty. Um, it didn't always work 100% of the time. But that was OK, because we just built it. And people started using it. Uh, and we interacted with our users, and they asked us questions, and they asked us to develop things, and we were able to improve the experience each and every day based on that feedback. Um, and as time went on, we saw like another little tiny problem. So keep in mind, when we started building my Ether wallet, we weren't like, okay, we're going to build the most revolutionary um, way to interact with the blockchain ever. We were like, we're just going to make something so that you can click a button instead of using command line. That was it. Okay, and as time went on, we were like, okay, uh, the DAO happened, the hard fork happened, people needed a way to withdraw their DAO, and so we went back and we're like, how the heck are people going to have, go how, are, how are all these people going to go and interact with all these different contracts? It was like a three or four or five step process. And so we hit it again behind one simple button. Okay, and it wasn't perfect. It didn't work 100% 100% of the time, okay? But it was better than all the other solutions out there. And that's what mattered. And people used it, and people gave us feedback, uh, and we kept talking to people, and that's what mattered. Um, and over time, we just kept building and building and building and iterating and talking to our users and asking them questions, and they would tell us what we were doing right. They would tell us what we were doing wrong. Uh, they would yell at us, they would encourage us, you know, it's everything combined, right? And this experience allowed us to iterate and just keep building our product and making it stronger. Um, but <laughs> the most important one, okay, so, you know, when you guys go out on your own little journeys uh, to build something, this is like the most important one, okay? It's just don't die. Because no matter what you think, you may have like this perfect plan on how you're going to build your product, you're going to talk to your users, you're going to make a whole bunch of money, it's going to be great. Uh, it never goes as planned. Unexpected things will always, always, always crop up. And when that happens, you're going to have to be strong, okay? You're going to have to fight. You're going to have to make hard decisions. And that's okay because it's these hard decisions, it's this struggle, okay, that will force you to evolve. It'll force you to be the best version of yourself that you will ever be. It'll force you to be something that you never even imagined being before. Okay, this is where the magic happens. So as long as you don't die, you will be better. Okay. Um, I also want to remind people that people before profits. Okay, so when you're starting out and you're thinking about, hey, I'm going to build this product, or um, I'm going to join this team, or I'm going to do this, or whatever it is, right? Whatever it is that you want, um, that you want to do to make this world a better place, always think about people first. Don't go out to make a bunch of money. Don't go out thinking about how um, uh, how your pro how you can monetize your product up front. And the reason I say this is that 
If you put your people and your products before your profits, okay, you're going to be so much more in touch and in, in turn, um, it will result in you being able to, to figure out how to make money. Okay? And uh, I also just want to point out that dealing with money is kind of a pain in the ass. Okay? So uh, kind of put that whole uh, dealing with monetization as far down the roadmap as you possibly can. Just bootstrap it, build it, um, just gratuitously ask for favors. Um, be shameless about it, you know, and, and be passionate about it. And that, that's what matters. Um, and definitely do not waste your time doing ICO, okay? It's done. We went through the ICO matters. We did the token sales. What have we learned, okay? We've learned how to maybe or maybe not evade taxes. We've learned how to maybe or maybe not um, avoid regulations. But the reality is, is that if you're setting out right now, okay, to build a product, to build anything, and you start with, I'm going to do an ICO, you're going to have to deal with lawyers, you're going to have to deal with accountants. You're going to have to deal with everyone telling you what you should and shouldn't do. And before you have a product, okay, before you have real users, because a white paper, guys, is not a product. Okay? It's not. And your token holders who are literally holding your token to flip it for profit next week, those are not users. Okay? So when we look at people, when we look at product, okay, you won't have any of these things. You're just going to have a slew of lawyers and accountants telling you what you should or shouldn't do. And for the rest of your, you know, the existence of your product, you're basically going to be watching your back because the regulators are going to come in. Okay? So just avoid the whole thing. Bootstrap it instead. Figure out where you're going to go. Um, start small. And then, as time goes on, you'll, the path will become clear. Okay? Trust me on that one. Um, and this sort of ties into my last point, because it says, don't overthink hypothetical future problems. And this is one that honestly still gets me today, like all the time. So um, a lot of times in this, like when we're, when we're thinking about the, the decentralized future, and especially solving really, really large problems, we love to think about um, every possible future scenario that could happen. And we try to account for that. And we try to plan for it and avoid it. Uh, and the reality is, is that it's really just a waste of time because if that um, situation does occur in the future, you'll be more prepared. Uh, not only will you have the information that you need to deal with the problem, but also you personally and professionally will be just more equipped to deal with the problem. So don't let some hypothetical, oh, in the future, this may or may not happen, um, limit your possibilities or limit what you're trying to build. Um, for example, with my Ether wallet, I remember <laughs> really, really, really early uh, in about September, I literally uh, told my husband that, oh yeah, well this is like just a thing that we're building for you know a couple of months because Miss is going to be ready and launching in November, and then nobody will use our product. Okay, I said this to a number of people. I was convinced that our product was like just something that was going to be a, a useful tool for like literally two months. And two and a half years later, uh, we're like the de facto wallet and, and everyone uses us and, you know, it's like, just <laughs> don't overthink things, just go for it. Um, that said, do keep your eyes open, okay, because um, as we were growing and as um, sort of this token sale and ICO madness was taking off, um, you know, about June of last year, um, I really should have been spending my time hiring every single person I possibly could, but instead I was like trying to solve all these problems myself. Um, I was staying up all night helping people. Um, I was uh, trying to figure out like how to prioritize the different the different features that we needed to implement and which bugs to fix and all this stuff. Um, so the reality is is that you know as things start to come up and as you start growing and as your product starts getting bigger. Um, you do want to keep your eyes open and stay aware of your surroundings so that you can address them as they occur, but don't let those hypothetical future things be, be limiting you. Okay? So find that balance. Find the balance on, on, on how to do, uh, the, get the best of both worlds because I can say that, um, for example, me waiting so long to start hiring, um, hiring people was definitely not, uh, not the best way to do things. <laughs> Um, but most of all, 
Love your people, okay? Because these are the people that are going to get you through the good times and the bad times. They're going to make it worth to build your product. Um, when, when things go wrong, they're going to be the people that you lean on. Um, I still have people that I met uh, on Reddit in like 2015 that I have conversations with every once in a while today, or I meet randomly at a conference like this. And I'm like, I don't think you realize you're why I was building my product. You're why I like was I kept building it. You're why when the when when times got tough, um, I was like I can't let this person down, you know. And collectively, um, the the people that give you the joy, that give you the excitement, that that make it worth building your product, these are the people, right? These are the people that you want to love and you want to cherish them because no matter what sort of road lays ahead. Um, without the people, it's really kind of meaningless and kind of useless. Um, which brings me back to like my main biggest point, the decentralized future is people, okay? Uh, and <coughs> uh, when I say people, I mean like literally anyone, okay? So the decentralized future um, is this global movement, right? Where we're gonna have to revolutionize all of these different aspects of the world. Um, and because of that, we can't just have these be um, coders or um, just guys that live in the San Francisco area, right? Like we can't, we can't just have that because if we're gonna be building for this huge, huge, huge world, we need those people, the people building this, to also reflect the world, okay? So we need um, people of all demographics, we need people of all ages. We need people of all upbringings. We need people um, across the world that have different experiences, that are older, that are younger, that are super, super, super like the, the tech geniuses, the researchers, the super smart people. But then we also need the people that can take those really complex concepts and explain them to the people like me that don't really get that. Right? So find, find where your personal spot is. So when I'm talking about building your product or going on this journey or helping change the world, I'm not necessarily literally meaning uh, coding a product or coding a tool. I mean making this world better in whatever way you know how to. Okay? And I also want to remind you that no one is an expert and definitely no one started as an expert. Um, and the fact that you're in this room actually makes you an expert compared to like 99% of the world that doesn't even know what the blockchain is, okay? Um, so often, so often I have people come up to me and they say, um, well, I don't think I can do this or I can't do this or I don't have this skill. And I just, um, my, my call to action for everyone listening to this right now is, Shift your thinking, okay? Instead of telling me um, that you're not a blockchain expert or that you can't do this, I want you to shift your thinking and start um, looking at yourself and looking at your skills and, and thinking about what are the unique experiences that you have that can contribute to this world, okay? How can you make this world a better place? How can you make this ecosystem stronger or more robust or easier to access or whatever it is? Um, and then the last one is uh, back to this changing the world uh, concept. And I just want to remind everyone that um, those who change the world don't always set out to do so. So when we first started building my Ether Wallet, like I said, we were literally just trying to solve this one little tiny problem. And we ended up having an enormous effect on not only like the Ethereum space, but the larger blockchain space. And I've been able to meet such remarkable people. I've been able to talk to such amazing people. And I've been able to share ideas with just um, you know, everyone in this room, everyone at all these conferences that I've met over the last two years. Um, but I didn't wake up one morning and say, hey, I'm going to change the world. And I'm still not quite sure that I am like changing the world. But I have to remind myself that every little tiny experience, right? your individual singular experience, all of those collectively are what make up the world. So if you have an effect on one person sitting next to you or your mother at home who didn't know what the blockchain was last week and then you took the time to explain it to her, okay, that is changing the world. That's what you're doing. So when you're building a product or when you're writing a blog post 
or when you're making an infographic, or whatever it is that you want to do, okay? Those are all going to change the world. You don't have to have huge aspirations. Just start small and keep doing it, and then don't stop doing it, okay? And um, that's all I have for you today. I kept it a little bit short for you all, but I just want to say thank you again for everyone, everyone, everyone for coming out here. Uh, I want to thank the MIT Bitcoin Club for, for hosting this and having me come and talk to you all today. Um, and I just want to say that, honestly, this has been such a great experience. Um, my team, the My Crypto team, is like all throughout the audience. So come find us and like let's have more just like real, real conversations and uh, have conversations with each other. And uh, yeah, love your people, all right?